AM 96.3 FM, The Source. minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this um, Wednesday morning. It's only Wednesday, huh, Robin? Ah, it goes quick. <laughs> in the studio, Courtney Williams and Milford is here. You might have heard the uh, the ad, really well done ad that Joe Martone did uh, to promote Shackledown, which is Courtney's newest book. It's a paranormal novel, and I can't wait to hear more about it. Courtney is a University of Florida alumni, the author of children's picture book series called Tales of Bark Storyland, two additional children's picture books, two middle grade books. She's the author of a book called Shell's Amazing App, uh, about a sixth grader who aspires to be a writer who has juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and has a master's degree in secondary education and is the author of the book series, The Grace Family Chronicle. Sounds like she spends a lot of time writing. Uh, her new book, again, is called Shackledown, a paranormal novel. Courtney Williamson Milford. Good morning, Courtney. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Well, nice to meet you, too. Do you live in Ocala? I do not. I live in Windermere. Windermere. But my my editor lives in Ocala, and she's the one I suggest, who suggested it. Is that right? Who's yes. your editor? Do we know? Her name is Kathy Rothenberger. Oh, I know Kathy. Do you really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How interesting. Well, that is nice. How did you two get together? Where is Windermere? Is it near? Windermere is in the southwest part of Orlando, pretty close to Universal Studios. Okay. If okay. You've ever been there? Okay. Well, uh, good for you. Yeah. And Kathy, I met uh, in one of my Facebook groups. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Which is, which is uh, I think it was a Florida Writers Association oh. group, I'm not sure, but uh, we corresponded, and she wasn't the first editor I, I'd used, but I, I have kept with her for a while. That's a good connection. I, her and her husband are involved in filmmaking. And I know, I, sh- I, I know. I don't know if that ever is something you would like, where if a novel becomes a film, but it seems like a natural for a lot of people. That would be nice, but I, I think that that probably doesn't happen to everybody's book. But <laughs> no, no, I, I wouldn't think I mean, it does. I, I haven't been trying to like contact anybody in Hollywood or anything. No. Uh, we speak to authors all the time, and, and sometimes yeah. it's a it's a mixed opinion about it. Some authors don't oh heck yeah don't if like somebody, the idea that a, mil, a film is made or whatever. If, if somebody would like to make a film of my book, I would be delighted. <laughs> but I, I, I don't I, I'm not. To me, this is I, I've been in the car business for a long time since 1991. What kind of business? The, I, I have an automotive wholesale uh, fleet leasing business, oh, and car, I've had it for car. like over about 25 years you lease so, cars well fleets of cars it's kind of like fleet oh, oh i like see equipment, like so WOCA, we could have our 12 cars just sitting in the parking lot with you, our logo on it well we might get into commercial leasing but right now we lease primarily to car rental agencies oh okay like small like i'm just trying to small. give joe a hint mm-hmm. but that's a good idea no we, we are looking into the, into commercial leasing to be honest but i'm not trying to advertise my company but i'm just saying that my second um this is like a bonus career, uh-huh. the writing. Well, so, and have you always been a writer? No, what? I've been a reader. I've always been a reader. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, because a long time, for a long time, I didn't have very much time to, to do much, except for I have three children, too. Uh, but, yes, I started writing a lot in 2016, like January of 2016, and I've just been writing and writing is ever since then. The book Shackledown, is this a, depart, a departure for you? Is this a different direction? Not at all, because no. almost everything I write, I mean, I don't know if you'd really call everything I write paranormal, but there's usually an element of magic, and I also tend to write... Other than the Bark Story Tales and some of the middle grade books, I, I tend to write um, historical fiction, uh-huh. uh, like the um, books, the the books you're talking, uh, the the Grace Chronicles, Grace Family Chronicles is uh, about World War II. Yeah. But it's based in Miami, and the characters have um, powers and such. But but Shackledown also is um, half the book takes place in the early 1900s because the ghost, the girl who haunts the um, large house. Called Shackledown. It was born in 1902. She's eight years old. If no, I, she's yep. not. No, I I know the picture on the cover makes her look kind of young, but she's 15 when she's haunting. Oh, I thought the, I thought it said something about being eight years old somewhere. Well, I mean, she was eight years old at one point, but when she died, she was 15. <laughs> <laughs> now, now the little girl, the little girl in the current time, I think when the when they move into the house, I think she is eight. Yeah, it but says whenever, on Casey's eighth birthday, Mary Helen Brayton yeah. discovers why her dream mansion Shackledown was such a bargain. 
Yes, people kept moving out and out. And when they bought the house, it was kind of close to the real estate bubble, and they just thought, well, somebody dumped the house, and it was in it wasn't in very good condition. But um, they figured out whenever Maxine showed up. And she comes every year on her birthday, which is December 22nd, and uh-huh. stays until January 1st, which is the day she died many, many years ago. They figured out it was because of that. That's why people were leaving. So in, if you're writing historical fiction and you're throwing in the paranormal, is, is that a, like a deeply held belief of yours? That, that, <laughs> no. Th- no. Oh, no. That, so no, this not is, at all. You just have fun with this topic. No, I just try. Because I think Kathy has, she, she works with Kathy people. Kathy does, yes. Kathy yeah. Rothenberger does um, have a book about how she has actually ex- experienced uh, meetings with I, maybe, I don't know if she's met ghosts but she she seems to be clairvoyant in some way but no not for me no I don't know why because I've tried to write books that don't have magical elements because people really like historical fiction and some people don't like to read them to read anything with the, the ghosts or or any kind of powers or anything and I think that that could actually be a better genre but for some reason I always seem to segue into um, them having something about them that's <laughs> magical. What's the name mean? Shackle down. What does that mean? It just means well the people that okay the people that uh, this book is not about slavery but the people that. And originally started building Shackledown uh, 150 years ago were from Pennsylvania and they were Quakers and they left Pennsylvania because they were abolitionists and they um, for some reason in the area they were in they were unpopular and uh, being persecuted so for some reason they decided they would go to Central Florida which was quite a quite a journey but it was hardly any there was hardly anybody there and they easily found mm-hmm. land to set up mm-hmm. on and they they changed their name to Shackledown which is an idea of you know get rid of any kind of tool of slavery or, or, or uh-huh. enslavement okay. so that's how it started and and they started it as a cotton plantation but then labor was very short so they soon just decided to make it a citrus uh, grove okay okay and uh, then you have the character delilah mm-hmm. in there yes very fascinating in herself oh yes i noticed a lot of people seem to like the um part that takes place in the 1900s and i don't know if it's because they like delilah who narrates those those chapters the chapters rotate between the 1900s and the the 21st century uh but delilah is the housekeeper and she cares for maxine who is the eventually the ghost and uh, she's about 20 years old most of the, for most of the story. I mean, she ages, but she's pretty mm-hmm. young. And she's lived there all her life uh, and worked there. She lived with her parents and then her sister, and then she became the housekeeper. But, um, but also the, the woman that narrates the um, current time is Mary Helen, and she has Casey, her daughter. So, so they kind of have the two girls and the two women who are kind of mother figures that rotate in uh, narrating chapters you know, now mm-hmm. and then, now and then. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this, uh, forgive me for not maybe realizing this, is this a, is that part of what you just said, hi, uh, historical fiction? Is there, is there something in history that they're are well, ba- based on? this book, obviously, whatever I write about Central Florida, I would have researched. I mean, for example, Orange County used to be called Mosquito County. A lot of mm-hmm. people probably know that. No, like, I didn't that, know that. Well, maybe... And then Disney bought it and changed it to art? <laughs> no, it was a long time before that. Well, well, yeah, there is some history. Now, now, world, the one I read about World War II has a lot more history in it because there's more happening. So in Central Florida, there wasn't a, a lot of historical stuff. But I still try to be uh, accurate as far as, the, um, for example, the owner of the house gets a car, a very rudimentary car back mm-hmm. in the early 1900s and, um, because he's really into gadgets and such. And uh, I have to do a lot of research about... Just did they have gaslighting? Did they have electricity? Oh, you know, okay. So, it so, is, so it's not far, about an so event, setting thing, things setting. For things that would that would put it in in history a certain setting up. Uh, but people still like to read about it, even though it's not about a specific battle or about Los Alamos, you know, the, the atomic weaponry lab or something. They still like to read about what it was like in a different time period. And you do have a different tensions in the book also as well between yeah. the male and female characters yeah. in there. Yes. Different tensions, you said? Yeah, tensions, because you just, you know, you're talking about is when he says, is she my daughter? And then the... Oh, oh know, well, that that would yeah. be the big reveal if, you, yeah. <laughs> if we talked about that. But yeah, no, yeah, we don't want to talk is... about that. But there's so many different tensions in there that uh, it's hard to put down. Thank you. Really? Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, really. Well, so there are a few characters in the book that are actually terrible people. And um, <laughs> some of that was kind of hard to write. I tried not I to. I bet it was. 
yeah, just because like Adair um, does such terrible things to Delilah, mm-hmm. and um, in the in the sec- in the current time, the people are not like that. Those people are mostly all nice. Mm-hmm. But yeah, some of the people. But my mom is uh, grew up in. I may have been thinking more of my grandmother. They, they grew up in Mobile. Uh, oh. and my grandmother was born in 1911. And some of this, obviously, that, that's a little bit later mm-hmm. than the time period, but not a whole lot. No. Especially for my grandmother, who is not alive anymore. But So a lot of it I kind of picked up just from being around her for a long time. Oh, like, that's mm-hmm. interesting. Yes. So, and are, the, are the characters based on people no. you met? Okay. So, I, so when you create a character like that, yes. you have the freedom to kill them off. Do you ever just kill them off because they're so bad? <laughs> like, well, when, do they Maxine have a life of their gets own? killed off yeah. because otherwise she couldn't be a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Do, do, and vaccine's not bad. So is it a challenge for you to, uh, to work with a character that you don't even like? I mean, or is, well, is actually, creating a non-likable character a good thing for a novelist? Is, is that a... Is that an important thing so that your li- your readers can uh, maybe be attracted to the book? Does that make sense, my question? Yes. No, there's definitely a school of thought that there must always be a, um, a like a hero and a, I forget the word now, the, the, the anti-hero, the person who's like the, the villain. The villain? There's, another, there's a better word. Uh, antagonist? Uh, protect, an antagonist. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and there there are really two antagonists in the older part of the book, uh, Adair, and then George has a cousin. George, the owner of Shackledown, has a cousin named Sal, who is very resentful of George uh, because his father gambled away his shares in the in the farm, mm-hmm. the, the orchard, or the grove, and uh, Ed George's father had to buy them back, but that kind of cut Sal out of inheriting any part of the spread. And George has him on as the farm manager for a while, but he has to get rid of him because he uh, does some terrible things. And I don't remember if he dies at the end. My goodness. But um, we can't tell that. <laughs> that one is yeah. good. <laughs> well, he's not important. I mean, eventually he dies, I guess. Yeah, he does. Yeah. But, I, but yeah, that's not really important to the plot. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, the Adair, actually, that she does, she dies at one point, And that, she's actually killed. So. so the fact that you can't remember part of your own book, does that no, mean no, that No, no, no. I shouldn't say I can't remember. No, I just, no, no. But I, I'm, I'm thinking that must be like, a, the, like if you've written, if you're writing another book right now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that does happen. And so this is something from your pet. Like, it's new to us, but this is old for you. And I wrote it, I think I finished writing it. Well, when I first started writing it, it was because it was like last fall, and I said, I want to write a Christmas book, and I want there to be a ghost in it. Mm-hmm. And I started out writing it with Casey and Maxine as the people telling the story. And they were younger. Casey is in high school in this book, but she was in, I was, she was in middle school. And um, it just didn't work. Because there, I had to think of a reason why Maxine would be so so unhappy and 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 searching for something and really you have to have some sad things happen in your past and and it wasn't things that you, i would want kids that age to read about mm-hmm. so i changed it to an adult book ah, okay, but, okay. I, but yeah i wrote it like in december so it's not that long ago i just i don't think sales death was noteworthy like he just like died of old age that's why yeah. I, <laughs> and you are a, a very eclectic writer because you write for children, you write for young adults, uh, and also for adults, and you have to keep everything separated for them. I know, and that's not good because um, the person I use for marketing says you must stick with, you should stick with one genre because then you oh. get fans, especially if you write a series, uh-huh. uh, and it should be a genre that's popular. Yeah, but you're doing good with that. I mean, with with all of the books. I mean, I think as, they're good. Yeah, and especially uh, Shell's amazing app. I mean, you've, you know, that you're really that's like the first book I ever doing wrote. An, an issue with uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and that's you know that is prevalent. Yes, people need to deal with that every day. Well, my husband. The reason I thought of that is my husband is on a board of a, um, ch- a nonprofit that helps people buy medication for conditions like that, that, mm-hmm. that uh, the medication is very expensive. And, mm-hmm. and so I, I knew some children that had that disease. But that but was good that was, for their eyes, through their eyes. Yeah. Through, that's how you yeah, write. I, that, I haven't read that book uh-huh. in a long time, but um, that was one of the first ones I wrote. And the children's books I started writing because my son and I used to make up stories. I think a lot of people that uh-huh. write. But, um, but yeah, the picture books, those are a lot of fun to write. I, I haven't written one in a while, but they're a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Do, in, in the uh, on the Amazon page, you're, you're standing with a bunch of fruit. What is that? Are you at a f- oh, farmer's market or something? No, I was working on the citrus parade. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. See right here, this picture bunch, is what I'm talking yeah, about. Right I, I, that 
that kind of is just I, I'm not a kind of person that like I haven't been to a studio to do author pictures and I don't usually <laughs> I, I don't usually bother to put pictures of myself in my books right because I'm just like not really a good photography person and I'm not very patient <laughs> are you kidding you look you're great you're beautiful you're so <laughs> animated yeah but I know that well thank you I don't mean that I'm beautiful but um <laughs> I think it's like whenever somebody did my website she wanted me to um get a picture done but i just never did so anyway i picked pictures that i had and i had and and because most of my stories take place in florida Uh uh, the oranges kind of make sense because you know the citrus parade is orlando and yeah that's what i was working on with i have a daughter who's she's now 17 but she was that's probably three or four years she was probably about 12 whenever i did that so that picture's a little dated Mm -hmm. so when you when you write with the paranormal as part of the plot do you attract a certain audience that likes reading about the paranormal you have to because otherwise yeah. they will get mad if they start reading it thinking it's historical fiction and it's paranormal so yeah you need to be pretty clear about that but there are people that like those kind of books the biggest hits the marketing lady said that um her name is lisa Fredrickson, and she told me that the biggest hit she's getting is on ghosts and ghost stories uh, but she also told me i should have put a picture of a haunted house on the cover because that would have attracted more people so that's I kind of actually of. think, and I'm not trying to be different with somebody who's obviously an expert at this, and right. I'm not. Uh, I'm not but either. <laughs> just from a you know normal guy's, I think that's an awesome cover. Well, thank you. I don't. Uh, I, I know we're not supposed to judge the cover at well, all. Well, people. But, but whenever you're on Amazon and you're you know you look at a cover, I to guess. me I, that's I, a that's a I that's a mysterious that's very intriguing. That yeah, that's intriguing. That's a good word. It makes you want to know what's oh gosh, what's this about? What, and tell me about the birds. Well, she even whenever she's alive, Maxine attracts birds. Like she um. She'll go around with a bird on her shoulder often. She has a Carolina parakeet, and then later she has a crow that she carries around with her. And um, even whenever she's in trouble, the birds try to help her. It doesn't really explain why, but some of the other characters, for example, Adair, who is the the mother of Maxine through most of the book, uh, has a cat that she that she has with her all the time that spies for her. So there's, it does, though. Like, it's a it's a big black cat and it has brown eyes, which, I don't know, which <laughs> cats can't have brown eyes. They never do. No? So it's a very, it looks kind of like a bear. I it's a very strange didn't cat. didn't know that. Uh-huh. Yeah, but it, it, so whenever it's around, you always know that she's spying and watching, even if she's not in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned the word magic earlier. Magic. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, one of the characters... Actually, Adair's kind of a witch, but one of the characters, the um, second farm manager's wife is Swedish, and she has a, um, she she dabbles in witchcraft, and she actually helps to get rid of Adair, who is the um, kind of evil mother of Maxine, and who is very cruel to many of the people at Shackledown back in the 1900s, mm-hmm. and um, they actually do use witchcraft, so you would have to not, if you read this, you would have to not be, like, against, I mean, I'm not, like, into witchcraft or anything, <laughs> but you can't be, like, if you feel like it's evil or something, then it wouldn't be for you, but I, I think, it's, I like to look up stuff, like, what kind of stones are magical, and mm-hmm. what that plants cool. can do this we, or that. When uh, the Harry Potter books started to become popular, yes. we, ha- we had a certain segment of the listening audience that was opposed to that book because of the magic and they said why are we teaching children about magic and our approach was i don't think the kids think it's real i think it's just fun for them to read about and i think anything that encourages them to read is going to help them with reading which is the more important the more important lesson i don't think they're buying into that magic stuff i think it's just fun i i know in our um my son goes to a K through eight Catholic school, but they have the Harry Potter books, and nobody says anything. But the ones that people do say something about are the Twilight books with the vampires. So I, the, 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 mm-hmm. the, oh, really? The librarian says I I just don't put them in there because people complain. But um, yeah, I mean, the middle one of the middle grade books uh, I wrote called Christmas Tree Acres has a character who dies. It's the best friend of this girl that ran away from her foster home, and he gets he gets run over, uh, and he's a ghost, and she doesn't really like. Like she doesn't really like him, even though he's a benign and even helpful ghost. She 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 doesn't like him because she's she's a little bit scared of him. Wow. So. And what what you do with this is that you make um, you bring up different scenarios that actually are happening, and then you you know like foster children. Oh, oh yes, I always and do you that. bring um, a, with the children's a, books awareness to that, and that's very very important too. Children need families. I know. I do that with all the picture books too. Like I still have I have I have one to write that um the character is a library helper and these are dogs, but she mm-hmm. they have a school. And uh she grew up as 
uh, in the show business. Like first she was a circus puppy, and then she was in dog shows, which is like pageants for dogs. <laughs> and that, then she was she was in a singing group, so she never learned to read. And um, she eventually gets found out and uh, goes to adult literacy classes and learns to read. Uh-huh. So yeah, there's always something that always some kind of. I had one about um, adoption that that's called Casey and the Cat Mama, and this mm-hmm. family of golden retrievers adopts this kitten at the hospital because it's her mother is his mother is very very sick. And it grows up with them and doesn't really realize it's not a dog, which I know is, sounds crazy. But, um, <laughs> but, but the, the first, I saw a review for it the other day, and it said it started out saying, this book is not as weird as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. But, yeah, I always try to cover some kind of topic, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like that. Is there a, a, like, a, like a parable there, a type of an approach? Like, is it trying to send a message of some sort? No, not at all. Not just, it's just for entertainment No, I'm just purposes. trying to write about what, what, like, you have to have something to write about. I mean... Something fun, yeah, and and not, and is, not always fun. Is right. that true also for the children's books? Or do yeah, they... that is a children's book. The one I was just talking about. That, oh, okay, that's about okay. adoption and learning that you're adopted. And then he meets his mother, who is still alive, but she's sick and blind, and she lives with her grandmother, who's really old, so she can't keep him. But they still visit and such. Let me see. I feel, you have a lot of books. I know. <laughs> My so, husband says that he okay. wants me to come to work. I mean, look at all, look, <laughs> I look at all the books you've written. Wow, so, it's kind of scary. So what? what but is, the children's books do, are, really take more for the illustrator than me. <laughs> uh, you have to do a lot of research when you do a project like this, especially yes, like Shackle yes, Down, yes, because yes. to have that uh, perspective told from the first person, you had to find out all of the nuances that were around and were happening Well, the, at the book time. is not told. It's, the book is written in the third person. Like, it's not, it's not like, you know, they're, they're not saying, like, I did this, I did that. Right. But um, even, even currently, I, I still have to do it you know, look things up and such. But I read a lot. Like, I've read, not that I try to, like, copy off stuff I've read, but I've read a lot of books about Florida. So I have a basic knowledge. I've lived here for a long time. But, yeah. Where uh, did you live before here? Well, I lived in Fort Lauderdale. Okay, okay. So so it actually helps when I read about Miami. I, I never lived in Miami, but... Mm-hmm. Um, and my parents have a house up in North Carolina that I spent some time at, and one of my middle grade books takes place in North Carolina, so that helps too. I hardly, I'm right now. I'm writing a book about London in the 1890s. Well, it's not about London, but that's where it takes place, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and that takes a lot of research because uh-huh. I've been to London, but I, you know, I, uh-huh. not not that long ago, and I have to look up Queen Victoria and you know mm-hmm. everything. So, oh, neat. so so, so is that is that one of the biggest challenges for you when you're writing a book is to is to create the setting. And get that accurate, or is that not no, hard? No, that's not really that hard because most of the people that read the book don't live where you are writing about. So they don't, and like so the 1890s, don't <laughs> there's not really too many people. There's nobody alive still. Now, when you write about World War II, you will get people who, who complain about using the wrong kind of, uh, you know, fighter plane or. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely get those people, but um. But uh, not no. The hardest part is trying is trying to uh, remember. The heart, especially if you're working on more than one project at a time, it's trying to remember the details so it can be you have a lot of continuity and you don't like contradict yourself. Right, right, right. That's probably the hardest thing. Uh, so the book is called uh, Shackled Down, and it's one of many books that Courtney Williamson Milford has written. Do you do you ever write under a different name? No. No. Okay. So always, always that I name. Can't, the only time I would ever do this, that, which I would never do, is if I wrote erotica. But I'm never going to write erotica. Well, so if you ever do, matter. send me a copy. <laughs> That would be the only thing I can think of that Do I want to hide. Are we from. giving one of these away? <laughs> you could give all of them away. Okay, if we have a listener who would like a copy of the book Shackled Down, call right now, and it'll be waiting for you here at the station. And I will take a caller here at random. Good oh. morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Morning, Riley. It's Kathy Rothenberger. How are you? Hey, <laughs> you, you want the book? <laughs> <laughs> I read the book. <laughs> I just wanted to talk to Courtney real quick and say hi. All right. Well, she's listening to you. I told her I would. Thank you, Kathy. It's All nice to hear right. from you. Let me give the book away. You got one already, right? She's the editor. She yeah. must have not a, paper, not a paperback one, no. Uh, I've got the, the right. ebook version. All right. You, if you, you want one, I'll send you yeah, one. Yeah, I got it. You got it. Oh. You got it. It'll be one. Oh, cool. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> All right. Let me take, take another call. Good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? This is Grace. Thank you, Larry. You got it, Grace. It'll be waiting for you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You got a hit on your hand. That's nice. I have so many people calling in. Uh, thank you so much for coming in, Courtney. Oh, lovely. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Be careful driving home. And uh, we will take a little break and be right back. This is The Source, WOCA. 
Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. Three Korean Americans who've been imprisoned in North Korea are on their way back to...